Chapter 8 of the Bobsy Twins and Baby May. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by John Brandon. The Bobsy Twins and Baby May by Laura Lee Hope. The Old Woman Again. Several boys and girls seated near Bert had seen him snap the paper cracker of course they would never tell on him but they gave him sidelong glances to see if he would accept the invitation of the teacher i am waiting went on miss riker in a quiet voice i want the boy i don't think it was one of the girls i want that boy to come up to my desk the room again became very still and quiet and then slowly like the little man he was bert arose in his seat he was rather pale for he realized that he had done a wrong thing, but he was not going to sneak out of it. I snapped the cracker, Miss Riker, he said slowly. Oh, Bert, I'm so sorry, was the teacher's answer. Come up here and sit in the front seat. The others go on studying. That was Miss Riker's way. She never punished a pupil at once when rules were broken. She wanted to think it over quietly and have the pupil think of it so she always asked the boy or girl who had been disobedient to come to the front seat bert knew what this meant he would be kept in after school perhaps made to write disorderly five hundred times or do some other punished lesson and he was trying so hard for a perfect mark this last month of school too bad well it was his own fault he knew that slowly he made his way to the front seat the eyes of every other boy and girl in the room looking at him. Miss Riker did not look at him. That would come later. Five minutes more of study, and then I'll hear the geography class, Miss Riker announced, and this set the laggard ones feverishly to studying, some murmuring over and over again the location of the Cape of Good Hope, which was the easiest thing to remember about Africa. Bert was not allowed to recite with the others. He was kept in the front seat and began to feel very uncomfortable. He wished Miss Riker would tell him how she was going to punish him and have it over with. But when the time came to dismiss the pupils for the day, the teacher said, You may all go now, except Bert Bobsey. This was to be expected. Slowly, Nan, with a sad look on her face for her brother's plight, marched out of the room with the others. Miss Riker busied herself with some papers at her desk. Bert sat in the front seat. Then the teacher, looking up, saw Danny Rugg in his seat. He had remained after the others. Why, Danny! exclaimed Miss Riker in surprise. I didn't tell you to stay in. You didn't snap a paper or cracker, did you? No, m murmured Danny rather bashfully. But I. I double dared Bert to snap his, and that's why he did it. I. now. I wanted to tell you oh was all miss riker said but there was a strange look on her face yes m murmured danny though really he did not know why he said it again the room became very quiet only the clock ticked loudly oh so loudly then with a smile miss riker said well bert i think you needn't stay in any longer i was going to give you a punish lesson but as long as Danny has been brave enough to remain and confess his part of it, though really you shouldn't do a thing just because you are dared to do it, I think, after all, that I will let you both go home. You won't crack any more snappers or snap any more crackers in school hours, will you, Bert? No, m never any more, he said very earnestly. And you won't dare him again, Danny? No, m I never will in school then you both may go thank you mumbled the boys as they found their caps and departed miss riker smiled she knew this had been the best punish lesson she could have said say wasn't she nice exclaimed danny when he and bert were outside crickety grasshoppers she sure was declared bert i didn't exactly mean to snap that cracker anyhow I didn't think you'd do it, 
even after i double dared you remarked danny i was just going to make believe but when my arm got going i couldn't seem to stop it exclaimed bert say did it crack loud loud it was like a gun and both boys laughed of course bert had to tell his mother for she asked why he was late coming from school she warned him to be more careful and to pay attention to his lessons but she did not scold she thought miss riker knew how to manage her pupils the next day was friday and when the hour for geography study came in miss riker's room she rather surprised the pupils by saying you need not take out your geographies this time then as she saw surprised looks cast at bert she added it isn't because of what happened yesterday bert isn't going to crack any more snappers but i'm going to teach you geography in a new way we are all going out to pine hill and from there we can look down on lake metaka we shall see little bays capes peninsulas islands and many other formations that you have been studying about in the geography class now we are really going to see them as they are in nature you can imagine what delightful excitement there was then to study outside the classroom what a change miss riker led forth the boys and girls and as they left the schoolyard marching two by two as they did at fire drill the teacher further surprised her pupils by saying you may talk all you wish but i'd rather you would talk about something connected with geography if any of you see a brook that looks like a little river tell the rest of us more wonders to be allowed to go out of the classroom in school hours and then to talk the children could hardly believe it miss riker heard nan bobsey and nelly parks timidly whispering you may talk out loud she said smiling was it possible it was as the boys and girls soon found out and then how they talked i see a brook cried nan presently yes and i see a pond that might almost be a lake added one of the other girls yes and there is an island in the lake put in bert quickly and he pointed to a small heap of dirt in the center of the pond this remark made everybody laugh i see a cliff said another boy and pointed to the edge of a steep hill from pine hill they could look down on the lake and could see many natural formations that in miniature resembled the larger ones told about in the geography miss riker had the boys and girls name the different formations of land and water it was the nicest lesson we ever had said nan bobsey at home that night dandy declared bert i wish she'd take us fishing sometime maybe she will chuckled mr bobsey hush not so loud cautioned mrs bobsey coming from a bedroom i've just gotten baby made to sleep the next day was saturday and of course there was no school though if it was all like the geography lesson yesterday i wouldn't mind going to school on saturdays said bert as he looked for his cap to go out to play neither would i agreed nan mother may i take baby may out in the baby carriage she asked in a little while you and flossie may wheel her said mrs bobsey i don't like flossie to take her alone as she's been teasing to do well i'm going over and play ball with the other boys announced bert just then the telephone rang it's your father announced mrs bobsey after listening a moment he says she went on that he has to go to menton on some business in the auto and he wants to know if you two would like to ride with him and she looked at bert and nan flossie and freddie were out in the yard playing oh would we cried nan clasping her hands in joyful anticipation when is he coming i'd rather ride with dad than play ball declared bert you're to go down to the lumber yard and he'll wait for you there said mrs bobsey don't say anything about it to flossie or freddie else they'll tease to go and i can't let them so bert and nan departed quietly by the side gate and were soon hurrying to their father's office on the lumber dock that extended out a long way into lake metaka what do you suppose daddy's going over to menton for asked nan 
oh he buys lumber there replied bert who had been to this neighboring city once or twice before with his father i guess that's what he's going to do this time and yes the children learned when they reached the office was exactly mr bobbsey's errand to menton this city was about fifteen miles from lakeport well children i hope i didn't take you away from your studies or your homework said mr bobbsey with a smile as nan and bert walked up to where he waited in the car oh daddy as if we'd study on saturday cried nan not me declared bert then we'll declare a holiday laughed their father all aboard it was a pleasant day the roads were good and they had a delightful trip to menton bert and nan were treated to ice cream soda in a drug store where their father did what business he had to look after then they started back as they drove past the menton railroad station nan suddenly caught hold of her father's arm and exclaimed look there she is again who asked mr bobbsey that old lady the one with the faded shawl and the green umbrella the old woman who left baby may on our doorstep gasped nan excitedly where is she her father cried look she's just getting on the train said nan for a train was about to leave the station oh i see her cried bert it's the same old woman i must stop her i must speak to her cried mr bobbsey it's lucky you saw her i say there hi madam i want to talk to you wait a minute he called loudly as he drove the automobile as close to the track as he dared go end of chapter eight